The first humans lived in Africa and almost certainly had dark skin. This was an amazing biological adaptation that our ancient ancestors had inherited. It allowed them safe access to the sunny savanna grasslands of Africa where our species first showed up on the global scene. Their dark skin protected their skin cells from the damaging and harmful effects of UV radiation. So how was it that our dark-skinned ancestors, at the earliest dawn of our time in a remote region of Africa, how did our species go from there to occupying just about every habitable patch of land on Earth and featuring a diverse array of skin colors? To answer that, let's track human migration on a journey from Africa out into the world. The emergence of modern humans, or Homo sapiens, can be traced to somewhere around 250,000 years ago. Some of the earliest evidence that we have of humans comes from the Lake Victoria region of Africa, near the intersection of Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania. But it wasn't until perhaps 100,000 years later that significant human migrations really started to occur. Now, human movement across the Eurasian landmass and beyond wasn't a simple one-way flow of traffic. It's highly likely that there were multiple migration events and movement back and forth to and from different regions as humans spread out. So what I'll show here is a very simplified and general version of what we think likely occurred. When it comes to skin color, the most significant migrations started around 60 or 70,000 years ago. But before I get to that, it's worth noting that there is some evidence that humans had moved out of Africa as early as 120,000 years ago. But it's not clear how major these migration events were or whether or not these early human groups persisted outside of Africa. That was an era when Neanderthals, or Homo neanderthalensis, dominated much of Europe. What does seem clear, though, is that around 70,000 years ago, humans had a stable expansion into the Northwest Arabian Peninsula and into the Middle East. It was sometime during this period that there was a mutation in the KIT ligand gene, KITLG, in this particular ancient human population. The KITLG gene produces a protein that's involved in the production of melanocyte skin cells, which themselves are responsible for the production of the skin pigment molecule eumelanin. This mutation impacted melanocyte production in that ancient human population. Subsequently, as different populations of humans migrated on from the Northwest Arabian Peninsula, they carried this mutation with them throughout much of the globe. And this mutation is still present in modern day humans who have Middle Eastern, Asian, North, Central, and South American or European ancestry. But this mutation is absent in people with Sub-Saharan African ancestry. And that's one of the ways that we know where, in both time and space, this mutation occurred. Incidentally, a different group of humans, at around the same time, seems to have migrated directly from Africa, likely through the southern expanse of the Arabian Peninsula, and into the southern Indian subcontinent region, down into Australia. This group was independent of the first and didn't experience the KITLG mutation, thus retaining the dark skin characteristic. The group of humans in the Northwest Arabian Peninsula then starts to expand. And by 30 or maybe 40,000 years ago, they had moved northwest into modern day Europe and west into Northern Africa and northeast out eventually up into the Siberian region of the Asian continent. As the European population continued its expansion into the Western and Northern reaches of Europe throughout the next 25,000 years or so, they had further genetic mutations that were selectively advantageous particularly in geographic regions that experienced long, dark winters with little sun. This time, the mutations happened in the genes of two transporter proteins called SLC24A5 and SLC45A2. The proteins from these genes aid in eumelanin production, and if the function of the SLC24A5 protein or the SLC45A2 protein were compromised, it would result in less eumelanin production and lighter skin. Meanwhile, one of the main populations that migrated northeast, 
out of the Arabian Peninsula, experienced a mutation in a gene called MFSD12. This protein is used in the production of a different pigment called pheomelanin, which is a reddish, yellowish, light brown color. This mutation actually made the resulting MFSD12 protein more effective and shifted skin pigment production away from the dark pigment eumelanin towards the lighter pigment pheomelanin. By around 25,000 years ago, humans carrying this mutation had reached the eastern edges of the Asian landmass. Humans then continued to migrate east across the Bering Strait and into the Americas around 15,000 years ago. Migration then continued rather rapidly across North America, through Central America, and down into South America. In addition to all of this, both the European and Asian ancestral human populations experienced their own independent mutations to the OCA2 and MC1R genes. Both OCA2 and MC1R are involved in the biochemical pathways that lead to eumelanin production. Mutations making one or both of these less effective would result in lighter skin, which again would be beneficial to humans at northern latitudes where there's less consistent sun exposure. By around 10,000 years ago, human expansion had covered nearly the entire globe, and the patchwork of gene mutations combined with natural selection led to a remarkably linear pattern between human skin color and latitude. Modern day humans with ancestral origins from populations at low latitudes near the equator tend to have darker skin and modern day humans that have ancestral origins from populations at higher latitudes tend to have lighter skin. This system of eumelanin production is something that's present across nearly the entire animal kingdom. From dogs and cats, to blue whales, to birds of all kinds, to stickleback fish, to ants, and even migratory locusts. On one level, our skin color is an intimate and deeply meaningful part of each of us as individuals. It's tied to the joy and richness of culture and tradition, yet it also carries the weight of atrocities that humans have perpetuated against each other over thousands of years. And yet, on another level, it's actually a fairly basic biological trait. It's literally only skin deep, and it's something that's been in constant flux for the human species pretty much for as long as we've been on the planet. For more information about the genetics or cell biology of this trait, be sure to check out the other videos in this Evo Edge series on skin color. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.